Well, hello everyone. Uh, today we have a, a great local business owner um, who has had to go through so much with this pandemic going on. We got with us Jake Rouse, who's the CEO of Braxton Brewing Company, and and uh, behind him we can all see the. Uh, the if anyone has has wondered what it looks like up on the roof of Braxton, that's what it actually looks like in a nice sunny day, right, Jake? So great. Uh, thanks for coming on and talking to us a little bit about all the challenges you've been through and are kind of weeding. Uh, getting your way through, uh, but you, you've, I, I believe you've now celebrated five years uh, of, of the Braxton Brewing Company. It feels like it's been just gone crazy for you, but maybe t tell us, uh, you know, starting here in March, uh, you know, you've had a team, you've had to uh, operate totally differently. So kind of walk us through what your business is and how it's been yeah, affected. For sure. So, you know, we're, we're a microbrewery that has a manufacturing arm and also has, a, you know, an experiential arm. Uh, through a couple of tap rooms here in Northern Kentucky. And, you know, for us, it's been really interesting, you know, since the, the shutdown in mid-March, um, we've been really fortunate that we can sell beer in the distribution to, you know, Kroger, Meyer, the Party Source, those types of locations. Uh, but it's been really challenging because, you know, virtually all bars and restaurants, a big outlet, you know, one of the things that, that really hurt us the most was professional sports going away. Uh, we were we were really ramping up the business uh, with our new hard seltzer vive uh, to be the official hard seltzer of professional sports and it's secure sponsorships with the Pacers, the Blue Jackets, the Bengals, FC Cincinnati, and uh, when all of this shut down, the returns we got were pretty sizable. So, you know, it's definitely been a challenge, um, but you know, we're we're hanging in there. You know, we we know that we're going to be here on the other side of COVID, and and we know that. As we continue to watch uh, a lot of our peers in the neighborhood of Covington uh, reopen their restaurants and their patios, I'm deeply encouraged uh, by the support that I'm seeing, uh, the socially distanced support as well. And so at this point, it's really just trying to figure out, you know, the right steps to make sure that when we do open, we open as safely as possible. Uh, and, and really not just only understanding when we can open, but also when we should. Well, Jake, you've been so transparent in talking about this and helping people understand what it's like and dealing with this pandemic and the effects on your business. But share with us, what kind of actually revenue have you lost uh, year over year? Not, I'm sure you have projections that are not yeah, For sure, yeah. Um, it's, it's definitely been heartbreaking, uh, Judge. We, we basically, you know, we, we were on a rocket ship prior to COVID. Uh, we had doubled the business last year. Uh, and, and we're really gearing up for a massive, massive expansion this year uh, behind our hard seltzer and behind garage beer. Uh, and right now, you know, in the past two months that have closed, we're, we're down about 68% in total revenue. Um, and again, I, I, I take that, you know, I don't take that for granted. We, we, we've been incredibly transparent because I think it's very important for legislators legislators and for lawmakers to, to understand the real pain that's going into this global pandemic. Um, and, and that's why I think transparency is key. But we've also made sure that, that we are, you know, really not taking for granted the fact that we do still have outlets to sell. Uh, and we do have some brands that frankly are, are benefiting a great deal from this. Garage Beer uh, is, a, is the number one growth brand in Cincinnati right now in craft beer. Uh, because of the pandemic. And I think that has a lot to do with people wanting to support local and, and an amazing price point. But, you know, it's, it's definitely difficult. I mean, we've never had to make decisions like this. Yeah. Uh, you know, myself, this is my first business. I, you know, I turned 30 last year. So really just trying to navigate through this as best we can and, and keep the team as intact as possible. Well, and I can't, you know, maybe walk through that a little bit. I mean, you have some people who've had, you've probably had to furlough or lay off but you've got production there. Have you had to try to cross train more or to try and keep people functioning, I guess? Yeah, we, uh, you know, we're unfortunately, you know, at our peak, we had nearly 73 total employees. Uh, we're down to about 17 right now, uh, which, is, which is really, really devastating. But we've been able to do a few things with the support of the community and the, the Braxton Family Relief Fund being one of them. Uh, we were able to raise $25,000 to provide direct checks and and health insurance to all the employees that were affected. And, you know, there's no doubt in my mind that, that our goal is to hire them all back as soon as we can. Um, you know, for us, it is, there's a lot of cross training for sure. Uh, you know, I, we've got two individuals uh, who were 
uh, bartenders, longtime bartenders. Ashley Meek has been with us for five years. Uh, and she's now basically a warehouse fulfillment person managing our, uh, our curbside to go program. So there, there's a lot of people, you know, frankly, that are passionate enough to roll up their sleeves and help us get the job done. Uh, and now we're just trying to figure out, you know, what we can do to, to keep the momentum going. Well, and your efforts across the, the board for uh, supporting, I mean, your neighbors there in Covington, where you got your, kind of your start, and of course, Campbell County now, and even with Fort Mitchell opening up, uh, trying to get ready for that to both uh, get back up in gear, but also uh, really continue the kind of effort that Braxton has already become known for is kind of, it's really, really great to see that from your, you. from your private business. Um, as we come out of this, you're looking for the day that you can safely open up your the tap rooms, right? And uh, the bars, et cetera. Uh, what's that like every day waiting for the governor to give you a date? It is, uh, you know, it's, it's really interesting. We're, we're having a lot of conversations uh, with our attorneys, with our fellow, fellow peers, uh, brewery owners, uh, and really just you know, working through talking to uh, everyone that we can. Um, there's a lot of, you know, the, there's a lot of information out there. And, and again, I, I think the biggest thing for us is trying to make the decision on when the right time to open is, not when we can. Um, and, and, you know, we're, we're going to take it slow. I can tell you that much. We, we've talked a lot internally about you know, outdoor seems to be significantly safer than indoors. So, you know, how do we how do we bring in some additional furniture and open up just the rooftop, uh, or open up just the patio in Fort Mitchell, uh, and just see what happens and, and manage it appropriately. And so, I you know, every day, every every news conference that that he has, we're we're anxiously awaiting the, you know, this is how we think things are going, and this is when we think you can open. Um, we've got a couple of questions into uh, to the, the lawmakers down in Frankfurt as well, and. You know, we'll, we'll get through it. And, and, you know, there's, like, like I said, there's nothing, there's nothing to be sad about anymore. I, I mentioned it to you off, off camera. I've gone through all the stages of grief that you can possibly go through. And, I can't and now you're really just trying to figure out how to, how to grow the thing and, and return it back to, to what it was prior to the, the pandemic. Well, you've definitely set a standard. I mean, you know, business of five years, uh, obviously you're fairly young, but you've set the standard on how to get through a lot of this stuff as well as to have a, growing business in the community. So obviously if everybody wants to support Braxton, if you're so inclined, you're, you're open for business, just go to your uh, retailer, right? And, uh, and be ready for maybe some carry out at the curb and otherwise wait for you to work, listen with the governor and get you some direction on get open as quickly as possible, right? And safely, right. obviously. Absolutely, yeah, we curbside to go and obviously just picking up some beer at a local Kroger store, it all helps and we do really appreciate it. You bet, well, best of luck and thanks for everything you do for the community. Thank you.